Have you ever wanted to make your subjects really stand out? But doesn't matter what you do in Lightroom, they just seem to blend into the background. Well, in today's video, I'll be sharing with you how you can use specific targeted adjustment tools to really make your subject pop and stand out in your photos just using Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. Now, if you're trying to make your subject stand out from your photo and it's just not working, it could be down to several variables. Take this photo as an example. Although they're standing out quite nicely, I still think I can make them stand out more and really make them pop from the image. And the reason I don't think it's working is all to, down, or all to do with color. Because they're wearing very similar colors to the background, it's kind of blending in. And after color grading, they're just not standing out as much as I wanted to. So if color isn't making them stand out, then we can use luminosity. And that is where masks come in really handy. So what we're gonna do is go away from the basics panel and then we're gonna go over to our masking panel. Now, I'm gonna create two masks to create this effect. So the first mask I'm gonna do is gonna go down to linear gradient. And what I wanna do is kind of darken the outside or the background of the photo, but not darken the subjects. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and create a very large linear gradient from bottom to top, selecting most of the ground here. Then what I'm gonna do is go to my exposure slider here, and I'm gonna drop that down probably by minus one or in one entire stop. But the issue is, because I haven't actually selected the subject, the whole ground is now dark. So how can we not select the subject but also still selecting the background. And that is when we want to use intercept masks. This is where we're using basically two masks at the same time, and one is a cutout of the other mask. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to our settings here, then we're gonna go down to intercept mask with, and then we want to go ahead and select a mask. And this mask today, we're gonna go ahead and select subject. And what this will do is it will create a cutout. Now, if we go ahead and show overlay, we can see how it works. Now actually at the moment it's inverted. So instead of actually selecting the background, we've selected the foreground. So all we will need to do is go to our select subject mask and we're gonna to go to invert. So now what it's doing is it's selecting the background but not selecting the subject. And we've created a almost like a cookie cutter cutout of our linear mask there. Now if we go ahead and turn off show overlay, we can see how it's targeting the photo. So if we go for a real dark effect, you can see it's really making the basic bottom of the image very dark while it's not creating any effect on the subject. Now obviously this is way too strong, so I might go for a little bit less. So I might actually go for minus 0.75 stops. And immediately it's made the subject stand out a little bit more. Now we can basically do the opposite in the top section here, so this kind of area in the top. So what we're gonna do is to go create a new mask, but this time we're gonna go ahead and create radial gradient. Now if we look at the shadows, we can see that the sun is probably on the right hand side because most of the shadows are falling on the left hand side of the image. So what I'm gonna do is create a nice big mask. I'm gonna go for a radial mask and I'm gonna place it in the kind of top right hand corner. And then what I'm gonna do is go to my exposure here. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that exposure by around about 1.5 stops. And I'm basically going to do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go to my mask here. I'm gonna go to my settings of the mask. I'm gonna go to intersect mask with, and again, I'm going to go ahead and select subject. And again, very similar, I'm gonna to go to my subject select, I'm gonna go ahead and invert that. So what it's doing is it's targeting the background and not the foreground. And we can see if we go again in our show overlay, we can see that it's targeting the background and basically created a cookie cutter, not affecting that. So it works really well to intersect mask and really make your photos stand out. Now there's one more trick I can actually show you using luminosity to make them really stand out and that is using a vignette. But the reason I've kept it to the end of this video is because a vignette doesn't always work for your photos. So to create a vignette, simply go down to your effects. We've got our post cropping vignette here and we can add in a vignette like so. And you can see it's actually worked really nicely. So around about minus 25 here, and I'm gonna to go to my feather here and I'm gonna increase that to 75. Now the reason vignettes don't always work is because where your subject is within your frame. For me, they're directly in the middle. So creating a vignette on the outside works really nicely. But if they're to the left or the right of your frame, then a vignette doesn't necessarily work. But a vignette works really well in situations like this, where the center of the image is where your subjects are. Now, if that's still quite not working and luminosity just isn't giving you that gravitas and that extra pop that you're after, there is one more trick and that is using lens blur. Make sure your Lightroom is up to date before we do this. The last thing we need to do is go to lens blur here we can simply go ahead and click apply. And what this will do is apply an extra 
depth of field to the background of the image, again, really making your photos stand out. It's the kind of difference between using a prime lens and using a zoom lens, but kind of in software. It doesn't work all the time, and you might have to go in and tweak a few settings, but I've got to admit, now the subjects are really standing out from my photo. Here is the before, and here is the after. And that's why masks are so important in Lightroom. And of course, if you'd like to learn more, I've got my masterclass video here, all about how you can use masks inside Lightroom to do so much more than simply make your photos stand out. It's an incredibly powerful tool, especially with the new adaptation of Lightroom AI masking, which lets you do automatic selections, which really speeds up your editing workflow. So if you'd like to learn more, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.